Well, we're uh, uh, fixing to start a series on uh, obeying God. Jeremiah, the seventh chapter, verse 22 and 23, says, I spoke not, spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing I commanded them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people, and ye shall walk in uh, all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. Well, that's uh, a plain enough scripture. Uh, all of us want things to be well with us. And God says, I didn't command you uh, concerning certain things, but I did command you that you obey my voice. We're in a series called From My Heart to Your Heart, and God has really been dealing with me on this subject of obedience to God. So I thought this would be an excellent opportunity for me to uh, share with you what God has been teaching me about obedience to God. Let's begin by defining the word obedience. Obedience, to follow the orders of someone in authority over you to do what you're told. Boy, that's as simple as you can get. Just to follow the orders of someone in authority over you to do what you're told. As Christ followers, we must understand when it comes to uh, God, obedience is pivotal. It's the main thing. Uh, it's the thing that God wants from his children. Jesus said in John, the 14th chapter, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, that's simple enough. Do you love Jesus? Then you must keep his commandments. And uh, he said in John 13, 17, if you know these things, happy are you if you do them. So do you want to be happy? Then do the things that you know to do. And James 1, 22, he says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. You see, a lot of people hear the word, but they don't do the word. And there is a vast difference in our response to the word of God. Uh, you find uh, in the book of Psalms uh, 111, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of, have all they that do his commandments his praise endureth forever. So the, the thing that we're told to do is to obey the Lord, to keep his commandments. Luke 6, 46 is a pivotal verse. It says, why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Well, that's a good question. Why do we call Jesus Lord, Lord, but we don't do the things that he says. You know, something is wrong with that picture. And he's telling us that we need to pay attention to what he says. Uh, the followers of Christ, above all else, God wants our obedience. And Jesus spoke on this issue in the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter, and verse 31a. Uh, he said, but what thank you? A certain man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. He came to the second and said, Likewise. He answered and said, I go, sir, but went not. Whether the, of the twain of them did the will of his father. And of course the answer they say unto him, the first. Now, Jesus gives them an answer here in Matthew 21, 31b and 32. Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto thee, uh, unto you, that the publicans and harlots go into the kingdom of God before you, for John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you believed him not. 
but the publicans and harlots believed him. And ye, when you had seen it, repented not afterward that you might believe him. Now that's a pretty vivid description of uh, uh, the cast of this story. The uh, father is God. And uh, the first son is the tax collectors and prostitutes. Now, the first son didn't start off the way he should have, obeying God. But when John came, uh, John the Baptist came with the message of Christ, they believed and repented of their sin and began to obey God. Who do you think the second son is? Well, it's these rabbis and unbelievers. They had a form of religion, but they did not obey. Uh, it's just plain and simple. Mark, the seventh chapter, verse six, says, He answered them and said, Well, hath Isaiah prophet prophesied of you hypocrites? Uh, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Now, how did Jesus know? that these people's heart was far from him. Well, our obedience to God reveals where our heart really is. Uh, you can't get away from that. That's why followers of Christ, uh, Jesus cherishes our obedience. He wants obedience above anything else. Well, what obedience does God want? Well, first of all, he wants radical obedience. Uh, sometimes as the followers of Christ, Jesus asks us to obey him in ways that seem crazy to people around us, like telling Noah to build an ark. Now, at that time, it had never rained. The grass and uh, stuff was uh, watered by the dew of the ground, and... Uh, uh, it uh, uh, wasn't uh, rain as we know it today. But the, here's Noah telling them that they need to get into the ark because a flood is coming. He spent 120 years building that ark, but uh, it did no good. Uh, imagine their comments when he begin to tell them it's going to rain and going to flood. What, what's the matter with that old man? Is he crazy? I mean, it's never rained before. He wants us to get into an ark and uh, be saved? Well, wow, that's crazy. I'm not going to get into that ark. And the, the, the thing went on and on and on, and as a result, uh, they did not do what they should have done. The, do you, you think that they probably thought he had lost it, but he hadn't. He was following the will of God. Uh, like when God told Abraham to leave home, uh, even though you don't know where you're going. People would have come to him asking, uh, well, uh, where are you going? Well, that's kind of iffy. You know, God's going to send me out and uh, tell me where I'm going, but I don't know. Well, uh, do you know any people there? Well, that's another matter. Uh, I don't know whether I'll know anybody there or, or not. Well, who's meeting you? Well, nobody that I know of. Well, how long will you be gone? Well, I don't know that. Well, uh, do you know anybody? Do you, uh, do you have any friends there? And all of that was no, but he obeyed God. The Moses at the burning bush, God commanded him to go back to Egypt and face down the most powerful man on the face of the earth. Now, uh, imagine when he went home and told that to his wife. Uh, Honey, I got to take a little trip. Well, where are you going? Well, I'm going to go back to Egypt. Are you crazy? 
going back to Egypt? That you're, you're still a wanted man there. And all of this uh, to please God uh, is, is going to go back and face the most powerful man on earth and tell him to let his people go. You uh, think of uh, uh, the uh, uh, Noah did it, Abraham did it, Moses did it. Why? Because they're willing to obey God radically. You say, yeah, but uh, normal people like you and me, we don't ever get asked to do stuff like that. Oh, sure we do. We're asked to, uh, God asks us to return good for evil when people are treating us horribly. Uh, that's radical. People around us think we're crazy if we do that. Yet that is exactly what we do. Uh, God asks us to do radical things like uh, forgive people who have done the most awful, nasty things to us. Uh, can you imagine uh, somebody uh, doing, saying terrible things about you, and yet you forgive them? People around us saying, are you serious? Uh, surely uh, you're not forgiving them after what they did to you, but yet God tells us to do it. It's radical. Uh, often God asks us to speak well of people uh, that are slandering us in every opportunity they get. Uh, and yet we're willing to say nothing but good things uh, about them. That is radical. Uh, uh, we obey and give generously, liberally to the work of the Lord, and people say, I can't believe this. You're, you're giving away all this money to the church, and they criticize us. Uh, I've been audited three times uh, uh, by the IRS uh, at tax time, uh, all three times was on my giving. <laughs> Just, uh, you know, you, I was real kind of shy and uh, upset about being audited the first time. But the uh, second time I was audited, I was a little more brave and went in there and finally settled the thing. The third time I was audited, the uh, man said, you can't give that much and live. And I looked at him and said, uh, you're not a Christian, are you? Well, he immediately folded up his papers and said, you can go. Uh, it's, uh, it's an amazing thing uh, what people do uh, and uh, uh, how they respond to us. Uh, it's radical. You know, how about standing up for the truth of the Bible? with our family, with our friends, in the workplace? Well, you say, yeah, but if I do that, I'll, I'll endanger our friendships. I'll maybe miss out on a promotion or, uh, or even uh, an inheritance. People say, no way, uh, just keep quiet. But that's not what God tells us to do. Listen, folks. Jesus asks us to do radical things all the time, and he's looking for, as hard as it may be, uh, as scary as it may be, as crazy as folks think us, looking for obedience to God, and we do it. That's just the bottom line. We do it. Now, God wants uh, complete obedience. Uh, John 1, Joshua 1, 7 only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from the right hand to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Now that's plain enough. He said either obedience means to do what we're told. Complete obedience means to do 
whatever we're told exactly the way that God tells us to do it. You know, uh, listen, uh, you know, God, partial obedience is the same as disobedience. Uh, you're not going to obey God 100% when he tells you to do something. Uh, then don't even bother. Why bother? If you, if you believe God, if you listen to God, you will obey God. I think of Josiah, one of the last kings of Judah. He lived between 640 and 609 B.C. He was king before Nebuchadnezzar uh, conquered the land and tore down the temple in 586 B.C. And Deuteronomy 2, chapter 12, chapter 2 and 3, he shall utterly destroy all the places and uh, wherein the nations which he shall possess, uh, serve their gods upon the high mountains, upon the hills, under every green tree. And you shall overthrow their altars, break their pillars, burn their groves with fire, and you shall hew down the graven images of God and destroy the names of them out of this place. Now, for a minute, let's go back some 1,200 and uh, 645 years, uh, uh, 2,645 years, and let's go back in time. And Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. He was still uh, a young man, and he began to seek the God of his father, David. Now, he didn't know what God was going to tell him to do but he was determined that he was going to do it. And under his direction, they tore down the altars of Baal. They smashed the idols and the images. And Josiah made dust out of them and scattered it over the graves of those uh, who had sacrificed to idols. But he didn't stop there. He also unearthed the priest of those idols and burnt their bones on their idolatrous uh, altars. Uh, he went and oversaw all of this and uh, he wanted it to be done the way the Lord commanded it to be done. This is what we call complete obedience. This is the kind of obedience that God wants from you and me. The problem is we seem to always want to negotiate with God. Have you ever done that? Yeah, or you say, well, uh, God says, I want you to do this. And you say, well, uh, Lord, what if I had just do half of it? Would that be all right? Or we say, well, Lord, what if I did three quarters of it? Would that be all right? And uh, uh, would you be happy with me if I did that? I've done that, and I'm sure you have too. Then God wants obedience by faith. Uh, Abraham, uh, in Genesis chapter 1, said, Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Now, here again, he doesn't know where he's going. He doesn't know how long he'll be there. But God says to a land that I will show thee. I'm sure that Abraham had some questions for God. Uh, like, where am I going? Well, uh, I'll tell you later. Well, how long will it take me to get there? Well, that's something I'll tell you later. Well, how many friends will I have when I get there? Well, we'll see about that. And what will I do after I get there? You see, it was all in the dark. God wanted him to go and said, I'll tell you later where you're going. I'll tell you how long it takes to get there. I'll tell you what, what's going to happen when you get there. But 
I would have had questions like that too. I mean, I would have asked God a million things, but it was just uh, uh, questions. Genesis chapter 12, verse 4, So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. Now imagine that. Here's a man 75 years old, and God calls him to go, go out of the land to a place that he doesn't know that he will tell him of, and he obeyed God and went. That is obedience by faith. You can't get any uh, other, out, any other uh, situation out of that. The Bible says, uh, uh, 11.8, go to the New Testament, by faith Abraham, when he was called to go out uh, into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whether he went. That is obedience. What God, we say to God, God, uh, you show me, uh, tell me and I'll do it. But God says, sorry, it doesn't work that way. You do what I say and then I'll tell you. God's question, uh, God took care of Abraham and yes, uh, he did take care of him and he will take care of us too. Now, folks sometimes uh, calls God to obey like this. He calls us to leave our job and take another with less money, move to a different place. It's obedience by faith. Uh, let me summarize here. What kind of obedience does God want from us? Well, once he wants uh, obedience that is radical. Two, he wants obedience that is complete. And third, he wants obedience that is by faith. Now, somebody say, well, so what? Well, let's give some application to us. We need to make this kind of application to God the target of our lives every day. Uh, this is where we need to set the bar. Uh, even if we can't live up to the bar, doesn't matter. We don't lower the bar. And that's, the bar stays where it is. And that is so hard for us to do. Radical obedience, complete obedience, obedience by faith. That should be our goal each and every day. And uh, when I came to Christ in 1963 in Abilene, Texas, under the ministry of Brother Howard Ingram. Uh, Brother Howard Ingram told me, he said, you cannot be a vibrant Christian, a powerful Christian. Uh, you, can't, you cannot have a vibrant, powerful Christian life without total obedience to Christ. And uh, I've tried to follow that. Uh, that's what I wanted. Now, if you don't want a vibrant, powerful Christian life, then uh, uh, walk with God. Now would be a good time for you to just check out of this message because evidently it's not for you. It is a message that uh, speaks to our heart and speaks to us plainly. Three things, three and a half months after I was saved, pastor asked me if I would start a single adults class. We didn't have one in the church. Scared me to death. I said, uh, well, do you think I could? He said, wouldn't I ask you if I didn't think you could? And uh, we started that uh, uh, class, and my, how God blessed. In a matter of two months, we were running in the 40s. I'd go out to the base and tell them we had pretty girls there and uh, go down to the bowling alley and tell them girls that we had pretty boys there. 
and uh, we we just uh, uh, set it up, you know. But we were running in the forties, and uh, uh, when I was saved, uh, after two years and ten months, uh, God told me that uh, uh, there was a church in Delano, California. They needed a pastor, uh, and uh, I felt. I was the one. I drove over the mountains and down in the valley of the San Joaquin Valley, and I just knew that that was the place for me. I, I said in my heart, if they don't call me, I'm coming back to this valley and starting a church. And my God blessed us in uh, a way that uh, uh, I was just unbelievable. We were able to build the largest church in attendance in that little town of 15,000. Uh, God just blessed. And because we were willing to obey, we packed our U-Haul truck, our dog, our cat, pick up father, my father-in-law had given us to move, and again, God blessed. Uh, there were families saved, uh, people uh, in that town didn't know what had hit them, but yet we were where God wants. And today I'm here to challenge you that uh, when God asks you to do something, when God uh, puts upon your heart to do something, you do it, and you do it completely. Do it by faith. Do something radical, and I promise you, you will never, ever forget it. Uh, I'm sure there are some things uh, today you've been arguing with, uh, some people here today you've been arguing with God about something he wants you to do. You're pushing back, ne negotiating with him. Just wave the white flag and say, you'll be glad uh, to do it, and you will be glad that you did, because God never asks you to do anything that is uh, unreasonable or un uncalled for. If I promise you, he'll never let you down. He will honor you, uh, honor your life for giving it to him, and that kind of obedience is the obedience that he wants. He deserves it, and he demands it. Deuteronomy 30th chapter, verses 9 and 10, says, For the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thy hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of the land, for good, for the Lord will again rejoice over thee, for good as he rejoiced over thy fathers. If thou shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the law. If thou wilt turn unto the Lord the, uh, thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul. So that's what God tells us that he wants us to do. He wants us to obey him completely and uh, uh, you can't go wrong by doing that.